are back with the second episode of the Move Worthy podcast with Jenny and Lauren. And we are going to continue the discussion on buyer agency, this time from the seller's point of view. How does buyer agency affect sellers in today's market? I think it gives them a little bit of leverage, in my opinion, on how they will or potentially will not compensate a buyer agent. How do you think it's affecting I mean, I don't, honestly, just four months ago, sellers were paying 6% interest and not even blinking an eye. And so, you know, while I feel like it, it does give them a little bit of leverage, I don't think that sellers are, are completely impacting to the change like buyers are. Um, at the end of the day, they were... Like I said, paying four months ago. <laughs> four months ago, paying six percent interest. I mean, and now they have an opportunity to to switch that up a little bit. But it really, I mean, at, honestly, I don't think sellers are being impacted like buyers are being impacted. I agree. I think buyers now having to incur the cost up front, along with their closing costs, mm-hmm. which are through the roof because of insurances right now. Yeah. So when you tack on my insurance premiums, five thousand dollars a year, my flood insurance is two thousand, and now I gotta pay my realtor on top of that, mm-hmm. um, and a down payment. Yeah. And then I think some sellers are still thinking that they, you know, their list price is five hundred thousand, and I'm still gonna ask five hundred thousand and not pay. And that's and and that was and the we, whole point. We had a discussion about this, um, you know, a few months back. It was like. What about all of these properties that they're comparing prices to? You know, these appraisers are going out and they're taking these comparables and they're using these to value the home that you're that you have listed, but the comparable paid out six percent interest. I mean six percent in agent fees. In agent fees. Yeah. So, you know, I think that definitely, you know And that was part of the lawsuit. Absolutely. They thought the prices were inflated well now sellers aren't given the discount either right so we're still in the same, same boat. boat yeah um and look I, I've, I've had a few sellers pay and i've had like i've mentioned in the last episode one seller really pushed the brakes on it you know they gave a little but it wasn't a lot no so um and that was with a full price offer right by the way yeah <laughs> um So some of the other things that we're hearing and seeing is should a seller offer the fees up front? So we get a lot of agents calling us saying, hey, is your seller offering buyer agent commission? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, they're open to it. Right. But I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, we're going to give 3% because that agent might have signed a 2% 2%. buyer agency agreement. And then something else that we we learned when we went to that luncheon remember Mm -hmm. so you know the new listing agreements have on the form whether or not you are offering a buyer's agent commission and how much that is and how much that is Mm -hmm. and what we did learn there were a bunch of attorneys there from um from a title company and what we did learn is by law a buyer has the right not the buyer's agent but a buyer has a right to see the listing agreement. Mm -hmm. So while I think that sellers should consider offering a a buyer's commission, I do not encourage any of my sellers to write that in the listing agreement or to decide that upfront. You know, like you said, at the end of the day, the seller may be willing to to pay 3% to a buyer's agent, but the buyer's agent might be just fine with 2%. Right. So why would I give away? I'm not working in the best interest of my seller. If you do that. If I do that. So what I've been explaining to my sellers is, hey, we're not going to put anything here, Mm -hmm. but I'm also giving them a net sheet, showing them what it would look like to pay what my fee is and a potential buyer agency fee. So they know what that bottom line number is. Yes. And I think that's important. Oh, I do that too. I do, I do the net sheet with the list price and you know, my, 
my fee and then I do a separate net sheet and I say, hey, this is what it'll look like worst case scenario if ultimately you decided to give the buyer's agent the same amount of commission that you're giving me, mm -hmm. this is what that net profit would look like. Right. And if they say, ooh, you know, my net profit isn't quite where I need it to be, as a listing agent, you can adjust that list price a thousand or two thousand dollars and justify what it is that you're going to be offering the buyer's agent. So I always do that. I say, doing, okay, yeah, okay. Doing that well, up front. Doing it up front. Yeah. Doing it up front. So when the offer comes in, because guess what? It's coming in with a buyer agent commission. Every time. Every time. Almost. We have heard a situation where maybe not. But that's cash buyers, investor buyers, maybe. Yes, where it doesn't make but a difference. But 90% of the time. They're going to come in with that. So I prepare my sellers up front. Like, hey, this is what it's going to look like if they come in asking for 3% um, you know, buyer's commission, this will be your net profit. And they say, Oh, that's about $2,000 off. You can justify that in the list price. Right. Okay. You we're, can, not 30, we're not talking 30,000. We're not talking a couple. We're talking a couple thousand dollars. Right. So preparing, preparing your sellers at the jump, I think is huge. It's a huge key to I making agree. the whole transition transaction go smoothly. I agree. This last one that I did, I, I felt in my heart that you know, maybe there's some agents out there telling their sellers, oh, you don't have to pay this anymore. Oh, there is. The buyer the buyer um, is going to pay their agent. And mm -hmm. that could be true, yes. But at the end of the day, like we said last week, it is the buyer's fee now. But writing it in the offer, preparing your sellers for what might come, mm -hmm. um, not offering it up front, because I definitely don't agree with that. We don't know what a buyer is going to ask for. Right. Buyer might have all the money and want to pay their agent all at once. Why would I say, oh, yeah, we're going to automatically give 2% or 3% or whatever it is. Right, right. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, let's look at our questions. What do we have next on here? Why do you think considering the buyer agent compensation is important? Um, I think it can hold a deal together. Absolutely. I think there's some buyers who absolutely need it to make mm -hmm. the deal work. And mm -hmm. what does that end up looking like? And I think that's important to discuss with your sellers up front. Like, okay, you, you're going to be a buyer at some point. True. You know what I mean? True. You're going to have all of these closing costs, all of these escrows for insurances to pay, your taxes, everything mm -hmm. to pay when you're a buyer. Right. So... You might want to consider. You might want to consider this. Yes. If yes. we can, you know, raise the price of your house two thousand dollars to to make up for that, and and everybody be happy, I think it's you know definitely important to consider. I think it definitely weighs a, a huge bearing on how the transaction is going to go. Right. And again, it it all boils down to bottom line. Yeah. Like you do in your net sheet. If the seller is happy with, you know what, this is what I wanted to walk away with, then great. Why would we like? try to force the hand why would we try to push possibly even pushing that buyer away yeah um i definitely think it's going to be important for the sellers to consider it what's it going to look like is it going to be three is it going to be one is it going to be two we don't know until we get the offer right and then when we go in and 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 build that net sheet out and see what the bottom line is yeah if everybody's happy then why not give i have a seller right now we had an offer a couple of months ago or a little over a month ago and um, I said, look, when we were listed at the beginning of the year, here's what we were offering. Yep. Like, I let them know we were already planning on this. Mm -hmm. I said, so I definitely think it's fair to include some of what the buyer is requesting mm -hmm. for their buyer broker fee. Mm -hmm. And he was great. He's like, yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah. And, and, you know, sometimes it's going to be more than what I'm getting, potentially, yeah. as long as that bottom line works, as long as the seller is happy and it works for the buyer, too. Um, think we're going to see it's going to be a give and take we're going to see some we're going to see right and that 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 goes to our you know our next point you know how are these how are these fees offset just like you said it, it comes down to net at the end of the day and it's going to be give and take and whether you as a listing agent um, for your seller needs to increase the sale price by a few thousand to make up for that loss you know great if it means that that the buyer increases their offer by a few thousand to make up for that. You know, there are ways that you can offset these expenses. Offset it in there, yes. I mean, 
depending on what they need for closing costs, depending on what they have for their down payment, mm-hmm. how much money does a buyer have saved. Mm-hmm. But absolutely, we just did one and we increased the sale price. Yeah, and the buyer was adamant about it being in there. and Well, and not only that, but you can tell a little bit about the buyer's situation by the offer. Are they doing RD, 100% financing? You know, if that's the case, then they probably don't have the cash to to not consider the seller to cover it. So, you know, you could potentially, if you reject that, if you say no to that, you could have lost a sale. We could have lost that buyer. So that's, that's something to definitely, now, if they're an all-cash buyer, you can probably have a little more leverage leverage and, on yes, what room. absolutely on yes. what to pay out but I agree. you know not all not all buyers have the cash not all buyers and it doesn't the mean they're not a good buyer correct <laughs> right and even on rd i mean depending on appraisal yeah there's some you know creative financial options absolutely. with that type of loan absolutely which i learned recently and I've been doing this for a while, um, <laughs> but it's been a minute since I did an RD loan. But um, but there's that. Yeah. There's definitely some opportunity, and that's where the lender gets involved. Yep. Everybody needs to be on the same page. Yep. Get all the fees, um, insurances, everything figured out way up front before yeah. you make the offer, hopefully. Um, but if not, during due diligence, making sure all the numbers work in there, yep. if anything has to change or can change later on. Because mm-hmm. we, on that deal, we didn't know till close to the end that and then and the one you're talking about he was rd right yes and so for those of you that don't know with rd if the appraisal comes in higher than the list price you can roll in a lot of your fees into your loan so ultimately the buyer would not have come out of pocket for her for your fees the fees yeah Mm -hmm for the buyers you know buyers agent fees so yeah there are different ways that you can offset those expenses and i think that you know just educating and being very transparent with your sellers up front to let them know that you know you are working in their best interest and you know these are some options and this is what we may see and this is what may come of this and this is what this looks like yep. is super 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 important right and at the end of the day on both sides buyer side and seller side are we really willing to walk away from a deal over a couple of thousand can we find a way to right. get that in there to right. get that covered to make it a win-win for everybody i'm all about being fair and making it a win-win it's Definitely. miserable to show up at a closing where one party is just disgusted at how things turn out mm-hmm. so that's always my goal for sure mm-hmm. may not might not be every person's goal or agent goal or or what even buyer and seller but that's that's what we try to do and, and getting it in there and making everybody happy is important too so yeah. um, how are we writing this <laughs> Yeah, we That's, went to we went to um, I wouldn't say a CE, but a, a meeting. It was and we, a luncheon. A yeah. luncheon, and talked about how this looks in a contract. Mm-hmm. I'm like to the point. Yeah, I want it like plain and simple. Seller to pay buyer broker fee of X amount percent. Yep. And then there's some other crazy verbiage that people are coming up with. Yeah. It. I, I I say it a little different. I say seller to credit the buyer. Okay. And the credit to be applied to buyer's agent fee. Okay. I say I say it like that because ultimately the seller's not paying the agent directly. They're crediting the buyer. True. And and the buyer's it's coming out of the bot on on your um, CD on your CD. It's a buyer's expense. Right. And that was another thing too. I think we mentioned this last week. Does a buyer actually have to write you a check if they have to come mm. up with a difference between what a seller is giving? No, Mm-mm. it's it's all taken care of at closing. It's as it, part of your closing it's cost. It's part of the closing cost. Yep. But I think I am open to changing the way I write it. Mm-hmm. And I think in an effort to make it make sense, even from a seller point of view, mm-hmm. since we're talking about the seller. So if I get a contract and it says seller to pay, I might in, immediately come off a little defensive. Yeah. If it's written in there similar to how we write closing costs, right? The, like you said, to the credit, credit the, buyer. the buyer at closing this amount, which is mm-hmm. going towards this. It's yeah. just the perception. 
think perception is huge. And I, I, I agree with that completely. And I also think that it's super important. Um, it's not, well, I can't, I'm actually not even going to say super important. It's required to make sure that you are documenting what that's going to. Because if you do have a buyer that is getting closing costs, that um, buyer agent fee needs to be separated. It needs to it needs to be specified how much of that percentage is going to a buyer agent fee because some loans only re- only allow allow a certain percentage. Right. You know, you might not o- you might only be allowed three percent of the sale and closing cost. Mm-hmm. Well, your three percent is your three percent is your closing a buyer? Cost. Yes, a buyer agent fee is something completely different. So if you're writing everything in one lump sum as a closing cost. It could really cause a problem on the lending side. Correct. Yeah, depending on what kind of loan you're It needs to be specified. I agree. I think that com- I think that's been coming up a lot. It has. Concessions. What is a concession? Yep. What is a buyer broker fee or a commission? I really would love to get away from the commission word. I like I compensation. Commission makes it sound like we're out here making millions of dollars. We're not, actually. <laughs> actually, actually, we're not. We're not. Um, but you know, we, we are paid a fee. It seems, it might seem like a lot to some people, but we might do one deal a month. We might do one deal every three months, depending on the market. Yeah. Um, sometimes we get lucky and we do four a month, but, um, you know, this, we're, we're not W2 employees and it is our compensation. It's how we, we, we make our money. It's how we, our livelihood. Yeah. Um, but I think that keeps coming up. How are we writing this? And it has to be separated out, like you said. The yep. closing cost could be as little as 3% on some loans, as high as 6%, 6%. on some loans. Mm-hmm. And your buyer should be entitled to all of that if they can get it. That's right. And then a portion of, you know, another portion of that would be the buyer agent fees. Um, yeah, I think there's, there's so many, so many ways of thinking this through, and there's still so many questions. Absolutely. I think it's going to take some time for everybody to really... Mm-hmm get into the groove get comfortable yeah on both sides yeah i feel like you know from a seller side you know working with sellers and you we're used to setting fees for sellers yeah we're not used to setting fees for buyers right that's where the new newness comes in so i think that's um that's definitely something to be said for all of that anything else that you've come across that you think is important um, as we're wrapping up by our agency as a whole, do you anything that you can think of? Um, Don't put me on the spot like that. <laughs> <laughs> stay calm. Um, you know, don't panic. I would say from a buyer, you know, I I feel like agents. Some agents are panicking. Some agents are unsure. Mm-hmm. Get educated. Read about it. Some agents just are not willing. They just oh, have no interest in entertaining. On. Yes. Yes. To, you know, agents that have been in, in this industry for years are just having a tough time yeah. with with this change. And you know what? There's so many changes in this industry, and everybody adapts and overcomes. And guess what? This is going to be the new norm in a very short amount of time. Right. And it's... And we always get through it. We do. We get through it. It's um, When I got into the business, we didn't do this. No. Maybe a little bit before me they did, and in other states they did, but we didn't do this. Right, right. So, um, and honestly, might not be a horrible, a horrible thing. I think that you know, after, and we're not even talking about sellers anymore, but just in buyer agency in general, you know, after Ida and after COVID and the interest rates, you know, plummeted. Everybody became a real estate agent. Yes. Everybody wanted to be in the industry because people were making tons of money. Houses were selling like well over asking, well over appraised value. Less than 10 minutes on the market. Less than 10 minutes (laughs) on the market. So, you know, you throw something like this in and it's a huge change. And I think that what we're going to see is the the agents that are willing to work through everything are going to stick it out yeah. in 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 this industry and the ones that aren't are and, and it's not a bad thing because we are saturated with agencies for sure. I mean we with are. agents for sure. We are. It's a lot. I think I think those of us who are willing to adapt absolutely are going to be fine. 
And right now we're in this weird market with interest rates and we're fighting insurance here in South Louisiana. I think Absolutely. they're fighting insurance everywhere. everywhere. We just are feeling the, the high increases because of hurricanes. Yeah. But um, I have one client who keeps saying 2026 is the year, so we'll see. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be here until then. We'll be here <laughs> well, for sure, at least. Um, so that is by our agency uh, last week talking more about buyers this week about sellers and we'll be back um, on Monday at 10 a.m. for a brand new episode I'm not sure what that's gonna be yet but maybe we'll create a little teaser at some point um, this is the move worthy podcast with myself Jenny Lenley and Lauren Jones and together we have the experience to move you forward peace out <laughs>